if I was racing 50Ks, this might vault to the top of my choice. You know, 50 milers, I'm telling you, this might be the next. Sockany Endorphin Edge, the pink trail monster in for testing. Well, actually, it's all done. We have made it. There it is on your screen past the 25 mile mark and 2,500 feet of vertical gain and loss. Gain and loss. All right, everybody, there you have it. Okay, where are we going here? Oh, yeah, stack height. There's the stack height on pretty high stack height for a trail shoe. All right, keep that in mind in case you are prone to rolling ankles, all right? Just don't just wanna put that out there at the beginning. Women's size eight, men's size nine on your screen. In my size, did I mention this is a neutral trail? Is it a training shoe? Is it a racing shoe? I'll let you know here in a minute. 8.3 ounces in my size solid score. The reason being what's inside that midsole. We'll get to that in a minute. That is a solid, solid weight, especially for a trail shoe. And the fact you get some extra bonus goodies inside that midsole again we'll get to that in a minute durable nylon mesh through the upper you've got okay not a crazy toe cap okay keep it in mind if you're kicking rocks you know kicking rocks or roots uh, you don't want or you're rolling ankles this might not be the shoe it's not a crazy toe cap it does have an overlay here through the toe box to keep a little bit of the grit out i got in a little bit of water a little bit actually well and even some snow in the testing so i'm not saying it kept my feet completely dry out there in the testing it does have a little gator uh attachment here at the bottom of the eyelet chain in case you're intrigued by gators all right so there you have it for that it does have a pull tab at the back let's see oh yeah i think it's semi gusset yes semi gusset for the tongue which did help the lockdown score oh yeah i'm remembering oh this is interesting okay so i'm remembering to um mention where shoes are made, barely. I'm trying to remember to do this for all of you because I, th I respect that. I, if you want to know where your shoes are made, I respect that you want, you're want. you curious about that. So this is made in Vietnam, all right? So there you have it, all right? And if, as always, let us know if you're watching in Vietnam. Okay, that is awesome. Here we go um, on to the overall score, 7.5 out of 10. Now, the reason the overall score for the upper isn't a little higher is the heel counter. I just, ooh. Now, I love the weights, great job, but I think we could just beef up just a little more padding, just a smidge, through on, probably on the inside of the heel counter to help lock that heel in just a little bit more. I would really love it, Saucony. I think it's so, so close. It's just a little thin there through the collar and the heel. I'll leave it at that. Overall, I'm pleased with the upper. Power Run PB, it's a P-Bax polymer-based foam, okay? Basically, it's these compressed beads of PBAX foam, which creates this lattice structure. You can really see it in this midsole here, all right? See that zoomed in look there? Really see that, uh, the, that lattice structure? I love it. It reminds me of styrofoam cups or like those old coolers you used to buy that were styrofoam. It just reminds me, even to the touch, it just kind of feels like it. But man, it throws your thumb back at you. Great energy return, felt amazing out there. I was very pleased, okay? So also, here's the bonus points. Carbitex, it's what they're calling their Carbitex carbon fiber plate. It's built like a fork, so it's like sus suspension-like, allowing some adaptation to the trails. So we're going into the details here. I right, buckle up for all the, uh, I don't know, the scientists out there watching and listening. So it's this uh, aniso, anisotropic, uh, anisotropic is the name of this type of plate, which bends in one direction, but not in another. So example, stepping on a rock, it will not, it will not bend the plate, but will be slightly more flexible in the opposite direction. This is what makes this Carbitex plate different than the plate used, let's say, in the road shoes 
from Saucony, okay? Also, nylon plate included to complement the carbon fiber plate. Are you kidding me? That's amazing. Great job there, Saucony, um, at, which adds protection to the midsole material, adds the dura increases the durability, and helps disperse the weight uh, while landing out there on the trails. That was a mouthful. Bottom line, I think Saucony's onto something here. Remember the Saucony Endorphin was at the trail? Really a rough shoe, really rough shoe. Last year, like it, everyone was pretty excited about it because it had Endorphin in the name, but it was rough. It was really rough. This is the opposite. This is a different type of shoe, different type of midsole, different type of ride, all better, better, better. Very excited about this midsole and at that weight, unbelievable. Okay, moving on to the outsole. It's the Power Track rubber, just the right amount of lugs. I believe we're looking at a four millimeter lug depth. Okay, so you're going to grip. I'm not going to put it in the commuter category. A little too much um, aggression there on that outsole. Okay, eight out of 10. And frankly, now my ankles are pretty strong. But I think, you know, even though we're past the 25 miles for the testing, I'm not going to be afraid to take the shoe up the 14ers here in Colorado by any means. I'm very excited to get this shoe into the high country and take it up some, you know, mostly because of that outsole grip. It is going to grip for you in some pretty serious conditions. Fit true to size. Ooh, this is one of the reasons. Well, oh, okay, I'll save that. I think that I think I, ooh, I almost let me just make sure. Yeah, it is true to size. I almost wish I would have gone a half size down. Now, maybe with really th well, not really, th but thicker socks that would help. But I felt a little bit of too much room through the toe box. Not not crazy. I'd probably recommend going true to size, but especially for climbing big mountains, I like to be secure in the shoe. So keep it in mind maybe a little too much room for my liking in the toe box. Comfort score, eight out of 10, mostly because of the midsole. Unbelievable, four to 500 on that durability. I wish it could be higher, but I think that power run PB in a trail shoe, it's gonna, it's gonna break down. It's just, there's no, but you get the benefit of that bounce and energy. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, how will I use this shoe? Tweener alert, tweener alert. If I was racing 50Ks, this might vault to the top of my choice. You know, 50 milers, I'm telling you, this might be the next, I mean, 100 milers, it's, you know, it's a, I'm telling you, this might be a pretty serious contender for long trail racing shoes now. I'm not joking now, maybe a little refinement on the upper moving forward, but that midsole and the outsole, I, I'm excited and not to mention the the fun bonus things you get inside that like it is this guy's got this is this is a curveball I was not expecting this in 2022 all right so I'm gonna say uh, long runs out on the trails you know those 20 milers for me and my training getting up in the 14ers but then that tweener back over to the racing like at that oh, at that weight and okay hoka speed oh there it is i think the hoka speed goat five in my size all right another very exciting shoe for 2022 all right racing uh, 50 you know but it's heavier 9.7 <laughs> I didn't think it was that heavy. 9.7 down to buckle your shoes, everybody. 8.3, 8.4. Wet, I mean, well over an ounce. I'm telling you, watch out. This might be, this might be a big deal. Oh man, I don't want to, I don't want to build it up too much. Like, okay. All right, we'll get to other shoes to buy. All right, so at $200, um, I gave it an average score, 7.5. Because like, uh, it almost could, the score could have almost been higher because of the price, because of the weight, and because of what you get in the midsole. Let me just rethink this. Two hundred dollars. I mean, I, I probably could have gone eight, but I realized like that's a lot for a trail shoe. It's a lot, but you get. So I would save this shoe. But now again, the stack height's kind of serious. So, but I like that. I I because I'm not afraid to roll ankles. Now when I race as fast as possible, like for a trail marathon or half marathon, I probably wouldn't. I would go much leaner. But when you start going past like the three and a half, four hour, four and a half uh, hour mark, and your legs start barking at you, 
you want a little bit of forgiveness under stat. I do at least. I want to baby my legs, and that is what you're getting in this guy right here. There you have it. Other shoes to buy. Uh, Speedgo 5, Ultra Glide, and crazy enough, much, much heavier, but it's kind of in that same more trail v2 coming in at 10.2 ounces so this is not a racing shoe two ounces heavier but as far as like softness under step and just a little bit of cushion that more trail v2 was a good one as well oh can you tell i'm kind of excited Woo! other shoes to buy there you have it shoe quick specs for the saucony endorphin edge so am i getting that right socket endorphin edge there you have it six millimeters 8.4 ounces in my size durable nylon mesh power run pb midsole power track rubber and that 200 dollars. i'm telling you now why is it pink i don't know but i'm not afraid to show up at a starting line in pink i now i'm just trying to think of a race i could hop in and really let let it rip in the shoe mm -mm -mm. I'm excited. Oh, man. Okay, full review score, 7.8. It's not in the 8s, but it almost should be. It's not in the 8s, but it almost should be. Like, it's just, uh, it's getting so, so close. Ooh, good work, Saucony. I'm very, very excited. Speaking of trail racing, Dan Shevok, you get the comment of the day. He says, your brother Joe is fast. This is being pulled from the GoPro Games uh, vlog. So wonderful to spend this time with your brother. I can't help think of my own brother, Joe, who passed away in November. Uh, Dan, I'm sorry. Sorry to hear that. I mean, I can't even imagine that. So I'm just sorry to hear that, man. He wasn't a runner or anything. Just getting to spend time is such a gift of God. Also, this event, the GoPro games look super fun. Talk about events that could, if presented right, could have a national audience. Dan, First of all, thanks for opening up about that. And again, we're all here for you, here to support you as you grieve for your brother, Joe. Um, but I think you're exactly right. I think the, the format of the GoPro games has a ton of potential. All right, question of the day. Here we go. For the rest of 2022, as the world continues to open up, if you could have one ticket to one event, which would it be? If you could have one ticket to one event, which would it be? Is it music? Is it sports? Is it art? Is it who knows what? Anything, any, any event where you have to have a ticket. That is the question of the day. Maybe it's an airplane ticket just to get on an airplane these days. All right, onward and upward. Ew, I'm very excited. I'm very excited. All right, there you go. We will toss it to the trail running shoe playlist. Trail running shoe playlist, right there, right there, right there. All right. See beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.